Hey y'all, welcome to the Style Chronicles. I wanted to share a eye look, well face look, using the um, NYX or the NYX go-to palette in Wanderlust, Wanderlust, um, just so you guys can see that it is very wearable. Um, I wear it a lot. Uh, yeah, so thought I would share that with you guys. And then of course I will go into a ramble at the end because I always do. What is a video without me talking a lot? Um, I get wordy, that's just kind of my thing. I don't know. I have a lot to say. No, I'm really, I am very, very grateful for um, you guys that have chosen to make me a part of your lives and let me share my videos, whether they are makeup related or fashion related or anything like that. And that brings me to another thing, fashion. Where are your outfit of the day videos? I get so many questions about my outfit of the day videos. Those are what I started YouTube with. That is what I will always, always do. I have not done any, however, in a very long time. And I realized that my daughter and um, the pregnancy I had with her was not easy. Um, so yeah, I did not, I did not feel like myself. I did not dress like myself. I have not dressed like myself in over a year. This summer was all about getting back into my clothing, my normal clothes, and getting into shape and routine. Of course, my daughter is six months now, and I'm back to almost to fitting into my pants, my normal sized um, clothing, my pants, my skirts, and all those things, but not quite. So that's why the output of the days have been very, very few and in between. I've lived in the same pair of shorts kind of all summer long, um, and I'm transitioning into fall now, starting to pull out some of those things and realizing they don't fit that well either. Um, I can button my pants, but I've got like a large amount of muffin top, which is not cute. So they are coming. I will always, always, always do outfit of the days. That is my, my absolute first love when it comes to YouTube um, and sharing content with you guys. So that will always, always be there just hang in with me as I get back into all of my clothes um, so that I can do outfit of the days or clothing, you know, outfits that are worthy of outfit of the day status. So they are coming shortly, hopefully, um, you know, fall. I, I'm feeling it, but the weather outside's not feeling it. So I'm just kind of still in shorts until it gets a little cooler. So thank you so much though for um, asking and emailing and wondering where my outfit of the days are because I know I've focused primarily on makeup for a while now and that's just because that fits. That always fits. Makeup always fits. It does not, yeah, <laughs> makeup doesn't care about muffin top or your jeans fitting or anything like that. So that's what's working for me right now. But stay tuned and I will do, show you how I accomplished this and talk to you guys later. Okay, so I'm going to take that first tan shade right at the front and I'm going to get it on my little brush. And this is my MAC 221. It's become the brush that I use for literally everything. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of fallout or just dust, if you will. Nothing major, but with NYX, there's always a little bit to be expected. I'm going to go right in here to my crease, where my crease would be if I had a very, I don't know, if I had a good lid, I guess. I don't know. I call it good lid, but I guess, you know, I have decent lids. They're just not creased where I would like. So I go in here and I do that and you can see already how much that kind of opens my eye it creates some depth on my eyelid and just for recording purposes I will blend so you guys can see and then I'm just blending that line very lightly around the edges just to show you the difference between my defined lid and my undefined natural lid so you can see where my lid fold is it's like right down here and then this is just open space. And I, I don't like to say normal people because I'm finding more people who have mono lids like I do or um, hooded lids. I'm like finding more and more people that have that. So to me, it's become the normal to have them versus not having them because more people around me tend to have some sort of hooded or mono lid. Um, but anyway, so can you see? The difference in this eye that is now contoured and the eye that's not and how it just kind of opens my lids not so flat it opens it up a little bit so there's that and excuse me I've still got this stuff going on I'm 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm wanting to get sick or if I'm not sick and it's allergies. I'm not sure what it is. My eyes have been extremely red. Yesterday they were gunky. Today, this morning, they were a little gunky. And by gunky, crusty. Oh, it's weird. Anyway, so there's that color again. And I'm just going to go right in here where my crease would be and create one. And that's just the socket line where my eyeball dips in. That's the line that I follow to do this. And then I just go back and forth. And then blend that. So then you can see the difference between a blended and an unblended eyeshadow look. So here we go, blending that. Sometimes I do just a little bit of blending, and sometimes I go in there and I really, really blend it out um, to diffuse that line a lot. So this is what I'm going to end up with. And for a crease shade, that is a little uh, vibrant. It does have a little sparkle. It's not as matte as what I thought it would be. Um, it's a little bit more shimmery, but it's pretty. And I mean, I could do that and wear some mascara and be happy. I'm just going to blend up a little bit more. And this is my MAC 224. There's that. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with that dark. It's like a plum brown, but it's on me, a little bit more brown than it is plum. I don't know. I'm the worst at describing colors. I can tell you right now. Everything is brown or gold to me. Um, just like scents. I think my nose only registers apple and vanilla scents because that's all I, or and musk. That's all I ever smell. Okay, that dark plum, I'm going to go right in here to the outer corner. And I apply downward and then I sweep inward to define that outer corner. Do the same thing on the other side, downward, and then inward. Just making sure that it's even. And then that, I will blend out the edge. Can you see that? Really helps if I get closer, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is that kind of golden, it reminds me of woodwinked, but it's not woodwinked. It's a little bit different. Um, that color is going to go into that outer crease as well, partially on the lid. So right in here. Okay, and then I'm going to blend that a little bit. And then with my Elizabeth Mott brush, which is, um, it's kind of like a flat shader, but it's a little bit more densely packed than a flat shader. A flat shader would be completely flat. This has a little bit more bristle to it. With that one, I'm going to go into that beige right here. It's like a golden beige kind of shimmer. And on the brush, I'm going to pick up both sides of it. And then that's going to go right here in the inner corner area of my eye, right there. So 
same thing on the other side and I am bringing it onto the lid and I like to bring these shimmers down here and like I said onto the actual lid and then to deepen out up the crease a little bit more some more of that dark plum on the outer corner very lightly not too much just a little bit more and the biggest thing for me is creating this kind of shadow of depth right here in that outer corner area because that is what creates kind of my lid shape and once again blending all of that together to make it look neat and lastly I did not bring my highlight brush of course so I'm going to use an Elizabeth Mott one but I'm going to clean it off a little bit with that highlight shade at the top that kind of cream colored highlight I'm just going to get it on the tip and then dot it there and dot it there okay and then with my blending brush I'm just going to blend it in and with my highlight powder for my under brow highlight I always get it on the tip of the brush and the first place you touch it should be where you want that highlight to be the, the where you want the biggest bang for your buck and that's true of any brush you use with any product so foundation brush you touch it to the foundation that you touch the brush to the place on your face you want the foundation to be the most opaque so for me it's over here where I have kind of a brown spot that's the first place that I put my foundation I know it's tempting to go kind of everywhere else that's where I touch it at first and then I bring it down across my cheeks and then you know last the last things I do are these two areas because I don't need really right in here I don't need coverage there my coverage is all right in here so that's where it goes first and then lastly I'll dot around there and it's true of any product so if I want the darkest eyeshadow here and I want that concentration down here along to my uh, eyelash that's where I touch it at and then I smoke it out and then I bring it you know wing it out so the highlight I want it here because that's where I want my brow to be highlighted so it looks angled and then I do sweep it down but I didn't bring any this way because I don't really care for that to be highlighted just touched it here brought it down and that's it and then of course with my blending brush I go in and just blend that down and across and then you can sweep it whatever's left across your brow so that kind of you know this is the high point that's what you're gonna create the high point of okay next up is going to be the contour so I'm going to take this contour shade with my NARS Eda brush and I'm just going to get that into the powder and that's going to go from here downward same thing on my other side this brush is so awesome you really cannot go wrong with this brush because it's just a straight line in and then you can use it to blend out and I go on my forehead and underneath my chin and lip line okay and then once you get it on like I said you can go in and just blend it out when you blend out make sure you're brushing upward into your cheek not downward you want this to remain light because that is where the definition is then I turn it sideways and I'll go into my hairline same thing on the other side make sure it's in your hair because if you start it here there's not going to be any up here it looks weird and blend up this way not down and then I turn it sideways and I go into my hair I have a lot of baby hairs right in there which annoy me annoy me okay and then with the smaller brush I'm gonna go into that same color and I'm gonna contour 
the sides of my nose. And I do this on the regular, every day. I like a contoured nose. And I'll do one side so you can see the difference it creates. And then I'll do, whoop, here we go, the other side. And then my NARS Eater brush, I do blend that out a little bit. Okay, and then if it gets a little too dark, you can always go in with your powder brush and diffuse. You see that? Any lines? Same thing down here. I like to keep that sharp. Really, really sharp. Okay. Blush, which is that apricot tone, which I am not a huge fan of, but I'm going to use because. It's there. You see that contour brush? That contour gets on there if you're not careful. Okay. It's pretty, it's just not my favorite. I prefer a really true pink blusher. You guys see my little fall people? He's my owl and my squirrel. And my hedgehog. Do you see the hedgehog? How cute is the hedgehog? I don't know, he reminds me of my baby. He's just so cute. And then the owl's really precious too. The owl. Mm -hmm. And a little squirrel. And they keep disappearing. My son takes them and puts them in random places around my house because he's decorating. Um, so yeah, they reappeared. And yeah, I've got stuff going on behind me. This is my, this is a tapestry. It's a tapestry of the Last Supper that my husband and I got when we were in Italy and we have yet to hang. It's just kind of floated around my dining room um, because we just have been so lazy so as not to hang it. I have a lot of things I need to hang. And because I don't know how to hang things, I depend on my husband to do it and I'm always like, yeah, I don't like doing that right now, so <laughs> he doesn't do it. So yeah, I've got stuff that needs to be hung. This is This is the Virgin Mary. <laughs> A picture of the Virgin Mary, and then this is the Last Supper. It's a really pretty tapestry. I don't know. A, a Catholic thing, I guess. We have to have the Last Supper in our dining room. Um, so yeah, there's the highlight shade that I'm going to use. And I'm going to go into that. And that's just going to go on my cheekbones. Like so. Down center of my nose, across my forehead, and then with the tip of my finger, right there, and then along the sides of my lip. Okay, and then lastly, because I just like a pink blush, I have to use naturally a pink tone blush on my cheeks over that coral shade I just put, just for a little bit more thickness. Then I'm going to set with some CoverGirl powder. Um, I have to set my makeup because I'm oily. If you don't have to set your makeup, that's pretty darn cool. My white balance must be like totally off, or it's the black wall behind me that messes up the white balance. Okay, and also when I set with that powder, it kind of blends the contour, the blush, and the highlight that I just did. It kind of blends it, like fuses it all together because you're basically buffing it all into your skin. So I really like that for blending it and making it cohesive and pretty. There's that. I'm going to run and go put some mascara on. Okay, so I applied my mascara and I'm back. I'm just going to do some lipstick on my lips. This is the YSL Rouge Pore Couture in 09, which is like a berry rose shade. So this, I think it's really pretty for the fall. 
And when I do my foundation, I always bring it onto my lips. So that's why they always look so covered because I always roll it onto my lips just to give myself some coverage for when I apply my lipstick later on. So this is the Berry Rose shade. Really, really pretty. And this was sent to me by um, YSL and Influencer. So that's where I got that from. But the Wanderlust palette was purchased that I made on my own that I absolutely love in my HEV store. Um, I showed you guys in a in a review that I did on it, um, but I wanted to show you that I do wear it, and it does look very, very pretty on. So there's the overall finished look. And for night, um, last night I wore it to a very unhappy event, um, to a funeral for one of my step cousins, which is really, really sad. But um, I wore the same kind of eyeshadow look. Um, of course, I had eyeliner on just to dress it up a little bit more. So I, I rimmed my lids in a liner and then kind of, you know, just to deepen it up. Um, so yeah, that's really sad on the side. I try not to involve my sad stuff uh, in my videos, but it just so happened that that's why I wore this too um, the last time. So yeah, to dress it up for nighttime, like I said, I did a little bit more eyeliner and that was that. Um, though, I will say hi to my cousin Bella, my baby cousin Bella and um, all my baby cousins because it's so crazy you know I make these videos and I know I get you know you get views but you don't really think about oh you know my cousin who's watching me or my aunt who's watching me or my dad's secretary who's watching me um, you don't really my neighbor you know you don't think about anybody else really it's just hey you know I, I treat you guys like I know all of you but I don't know all of you, but then I do know some of you. So it's crazy because people will say, oh, you talked about this in a video and, you know, and I liked it or I didn't like that at all. Um, but then, you know, my little cousin, she's always asking me if she can do a video with me. And one of these days we're going to get her over here. So Eva and her can do a video together. They're the same age. Um, so hi to my lovely little cousin, Bella. It's her birthday this weekend. So happy birthday to her. Um, and then for my other cousins that watch, I really... Um, I learned some news last night about one of them um, and their acceptance into the colleges they wanted to get into. And so I'm really, really proud of them because my baby cousins are doing wonderful things. And I have two sets of cousins. I have my immediate cousins that are my, you know, aunts and uncles' kids. And then those cousins that were older than me have already had children. So they're my baby cousins. Those are my younger cousins. Um, so they're like my cousins, cousin, no, my cousins' children. What is that? Like cousins once removed or twice removed, something like that. It's crazy. So yeah, my baby cousins, I refer to them as. Um, and the other one who is awaiting a letter into dental school, and I hope, I hope she's in my prayers because I really do hope that she gets in because I know that's what she and her family have planned for. But all my baby cousins in general, from um, the oldest down to the one that's still in high school right now, and then the set that kind of was born with my daughter um, that are really young. Are just doing amazing things. They're amazing, amazing kids. And I really, I wish my cousins would write books so I could read them and just do whatever they did for my children because their children are awesome. So great job, um, cousins, on your children. Um, and just, yeah, thank you so much for watching and commenting and just being a part of my everyday. It's crazy when you go to funerals or you have to share, you know, sad times, um, you realize how wonderful your family is because they come together so genuinely. But you also realize how short life is and how much everybody really matters. Um, so it's crazy. <laughs> but thank you because you guys really do matter to me, the ones that I interact with a lot, um, as long, you know, as well as my family and friends and friends of friends. Crazy. My parents' friends have found me on YouTube, so it's nutty. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.